Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel, with us. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And as you can see here, once again, our case studies uh, come to us from our customers and they've come through for us again. Nothing better than real case studies from the field. Nothing better than that. And this is a potpourri of cost savings. Essentially, this is two case studies rolled up into one presentation from different facilities. One's a steel facility, one's a oil pumping station facility. So without further hesitation, let's get into the uh, case study. And we can see here, this is a bridle roll motor. And it's a 460 volt, 400 horsepower. And it's really used to keep the tension in the line as it's going through its, uh, its process. Right, and one thing I like to point out is the, that the size of this motor can be misleading. It may be 400 horsepower, may not seem large, but it's a low voltage. So the amperage that's going through this drive is extremely high. It needs to be extremely robust. Things can go south very quickly. And, in a, and when you're rolling steel, you don't want that to kink up and, and go bad. Right. Certainly could affect the process, and whatever's on that line could be damaged or affected. So we did a, a one-time test of this motor. And we get this, which is, this is new, isn't it? This is it is, our, yeah. This is our ocular fault zone. So we're presenting the, the fault zones in a, in a more interactive way with better recommended actions. And so it's, it's gotten some rave reviews on the, on the early releases and uh, look forward to everybody seeing that. Right, and in this case here, we have our power circuit, which is showing in red. And the power circuit consists of a resistive imbalance, which is an offline test, and then our current imbalance and our voltage imbalance, which are not recorded because they were online tests, and we didn't have that in this case. Right. Tech support would love all three, but in this situation, a resistive imbalance in red, we're comparing it to well-known and accepted standards in the industry, and 10% has to be taken very serious when it comes to resistance. Right. So we next step was we took a standard test, and that's a three-minute check of the motor, and we're off by two one thousandths of an ohm. Doesn't seem like much. It really doesn't, does it? But you know, that's why we throw the percentage in there because regardless of the small changes you see in individual phases, it's that percentage that needs to be looked at and uh, an action taken on. So this 10% yeah, may cause some extra heating. Especially when you look at normal comparisons of like maybe 1% or less. In general, motors this size, you know, you don't want to see more than 1%. And you had mentioned earlier, there's a lot of current flowing through this motor. Huge current and huge heat. So we take a go down to the connection, and this is what we find. Ouch. Phase two shows some signs of uh, excess heating, does it Very not? Very much so. And you notice it was on T2. Well, we saw one to two, two to three phases that are creating the, the higher resistance, and sure enough, you know, that allows us to focus in on phase two. We're seeing it here, and, uh, and wow, that's a lot of heat. And, and this is... You know, at 10%, you're normally borderlining a, an extreme severe situation, and, and this could have gone to single phase if they let it go much longer. And you wouldn't think putting two parallel leads in one single lug would create this, but it did. <laughs> and this was yeah. a shortcut. It's maybe an effort to be efficient that does not pay. One interesting fact, too, is this motor didn't actually fail, but it was on a variable frequency drive. Yeah, and that's a, kind of a double-edged story. In one ha hand, variable frequency drives will often control the voltage through startup, reducing the amount of, of, of ongoing voltage stress and, 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 and uh, how would you say it, uh, imbalanced fields within the motor. Uh, on the other side of the sword, you know, the transient voltages that can be seen on the motor insulation do occur as, those, as the firing of the cards occurs, and so there's a, a bad side to that as well. Mm -hmm. So we come through and uh, take a, a follow-up test once we've repaired that connection. And what do we see here? Everything is really restored back to normal. Point really? Two good, seven. Yes. We're, we've gone from a thousandth ohm change to a ten thousandth, now to a hundred thousandth of an ohm differential, uh, which is a, a wonderful reading, less than one percent as we suggested. And uh, looking once again at our newly released software, MC Gold 3, this is our ocular view of the fault zone where we're looking at all six of these fault zones and once again we're on the power circuit and everything's restored to normal because our resistive imbalance is back in check. A new replacement motor would cost $30,000. That's some, that's some serious money and, and again, how does that influence production? Yeah. Uh, if this motor went on a single phase, yeah, it's $30,000. How much would a few rolls of steel cost uh, uh, you know, re having to re redo that whole line again. And in a, a slowing uh, or lowering economy uh, where commodity prices have gone down, $30,000 can be an extraordinary cost to an operation. 
So next, we want to go and uh, look in at our next motor, and a little different, it's a 4160-volt two-pole motor. Ah, the two-pole motor. Large two-pole motor, not always the easiest to analyze for sure. And it's a booster pump on a pipeline, uh, and this was found during routine vibration checks and audible noises. The onboard technology, eyes, ears, and nose, <laughs> right? So very good. Now, interesting about this motor, it was, it was purchased as a used motor classifi classified as electrically okay. Often people will buy these motors, they're given a six-month warranty or a three-month warranty, and, and they're crossing their fingers. Yeah, and, and so we go ahead and we did a rotor influence check, uh, which we're looking at inductance over a specific pole group, and in this case we did a 360-degree full circle of the rotor and the stator. Sure. What do we see here, Noah? Immediately I look at the blue alert the possible eccentricity, and this is a calculation we do that says, hey, the movement of inductance from peak to peak across the rotation of the rotor uh, is more than we expect to see, and you can see how the graph is rising over the, the, the as we turn in the rotor. Yeah, so we take it apart, take it back to the shop, and boy, where air gap was measured as off as much as three uh, hundredths of an inch. Right, yeah, yeah. So, you know, may not seem like a lot, but if you look at the specs, that's off the chart. That okay, that's is just way in excess for a motor this size, and the clearances need to be so much tighter than that. And so all the fits were, uh, and the machine surfaces were checked for concentricity and parallelism. Uh, areas were found to be out of spec, uh, quite a few areas. Hmm. So much so that they thought that maybe this motor was in, taken some kind of a, it was in a wreck or possibly fell. Who knows what the condition is. That's why it's really important to do a QA check before you accept the motor, right? Absolutely. If they had done this testing prior to, the cost to get this thing in spec may have been included in the purchase price. <laughs> or, and, you, know, you know, maybe we could have done some negotiations. There you right? go. Let's drop yeah, the price okay, a little bit. It's electrically okay, but... Mechanically not. But yeah. Maybe there's some <laughs> issues with this that we need to take a better look at. True. Uh, so after everything is is done, uh, we look at we do another rotor influence check and and what do we see? I'm feeling pretty good about this rig test. Yeah, quite a difference in changes. We don't see the blue anymore, do we? Correct. So we don't say it's possible eccentricity or concentric wound, and everything is pretty stable and not really drifting up. Correct. Peak to peak variances are are, are stable. The, uh, the the high peaks are almost a straight line across the top. So we're, we really like this test. Well, as always, we'd like to thank you uh, as you listen to us, and if you have any suggestions for a case study, please feel free to uh, drop them to us at www.pdma.com or give us a call. Uh, we would be more than happy to entertain any case studies that you have out there. Once again, thank you for your time. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate the time. And uh, you guys have a safe day.